So, uh, if we are going to be talking about fractions, we first have to talk about LCDs. What does LCD stand for? Can someone tell me? Least common denominator, also known as the lowest common denominator. It's the same thing. You can write least underneath lowest if you'd like. They're the same. Can I have a volunteer read out the definition of an LCD for everyone, please? Thank you, Noah. Go for it. The smallest possible multiple of all denominators in an equation. Beautiful. Thank you. The smallest possible multiple of all denominators in an equation. So, like we mentioned in the warm up, if we want to add two fractions together, we have to first find the lowest common denominator between those two fractions. And the way we can do that is with a nice, convenient multiple table multiples table. That's what this is right here. So if we want to find the LCD between these two fractions, all we have to do is list out the multiples for each denominator until we find a matching pair of multiples. I know that sounds kind of like a lot because there's a lot of math words in there, but once we go through this, you'll see exactly what I mean. So the expression that we have here is 1 over 9 plus 5 over 12. Now, if we were multiplying these fractions, again, we could just multiply the numbers across. But since we're adding them, we need to have the same denominator. So here's how we're going to find it. This column here is our multiples. We're going to multiply by 1, multiply by 2, by 3, and by 4. This second column here is our first denominator of 9. And this third column is our second denominator, which is 12. In the first row, we can see that 9 times 1 gives us 9, and 12 times 1 gives us 12. But what's going to go in the second box here? Well, it'll be 9 times 2, which is 18. What's the next multiple of 9? 9 times 3? 27. And what about 9 times 4? 36. Now we're going to go to our second denominator and list out all of our multiples, or at least the first four multiples, for 12. 12 times 1 is 12, but what's 12 times 2? 12 times 2 is 24. 24. What's 12 times 3? 36. 36. Uh-oh, there we go. And what about, let's just finish it off, 12 times 4? 48. 48, right? So right there, that's what we want to see. We got a 36 on the left side column, and we've got a 36 on the right side column. That means that our lowest common denominator is what? 36. If we want these two fractions to have the same denominator, the denominator that we want to see here is 36. Now we just have to figure out how we're going to inflate these fractions or make these fractions appear larger so that they have a denominator of 36. It's really simple to do that. We just use our multiples table. Again, this should be review. Once we see a common multiple, twice in our table, that's the 36's right there. We're going to use the number from this far left multiple column in order to quote unquote bust our fractions. And what that means is we get all the same denominator so that we can cancel the denominators out and not have any fractions at all, right? Because we don't want to solve equations with fractions. So we take a look at 1 over 9. And we ask ourselves, how are we going to get a denominator of 36 when we have a fraction with a denominator right now of 9? And you'll see here that we're multiplying by 4 over 4. Let's take a look at this first denominator here in our multiples table. Our first denominator of 9 was able to get to 36 when we multiplied it by 4. Everyone follow that? Take a look up at the board real quick. Our first denominator is 9. We were able to bring it up to 36 by, we just look over, multiplying by 4. Now we know we're going to have to take 1 over 9 and multiply it by 4 over 4.
Okay. Why are we multiplying the fraction by 4 over 4 instead of just multiplying it by 4? Anyone have an idea? Theo? Because I forgot how to explain it. Well, that's okay. What is 4 over 4 equal to? 1. 1, one right? Does the number technically change when we multiply it by 1? No. No, it doesn't. What's 3 times 1? Three. 3. What's 10 times 1? Ten. 10. 10, right? Whenever we multiply a number by 1, we're really just doing nothing with it. Now, when we multiply it by a fraction, a whole fraction as we call it, because the top number is the same as the bottom number, we're not changing what the number is. We're just kind of inflating it a little bit so we can get a better idea of what fraction we're going to have when we add them together. It'll make more sense once we see exactly what we do. So that's our first, uh, first fraction there, 1 over 9. Now we're not going to multiply 5 over 12 by 4 over 4 because 12 times 4 is not going to give us a 36 in the bottom. So we take a look at our third column, our second denominator, which is 12. And here we get a 36 by multiplying by 3. So for our second fraction, if we want if we want to have that LCD the same, 36, we've got to multiply this fraction now by 3 over 3. What's 3 over 3 equal to, everybody? 1. 1, right? So are we changing technically anything no. about this fraction? No. no, it's the exact same fraction, just inflated or made larger. So when we multiply these fractions, again, we multiply across, so we get 4 times 1 over 4 times 9, which turns into 4 over 36. And we get 5 times 3 over 12 times 3, which comes out to 15 over 36. This is Mr. Church. Yeah, I'll send it right up. So, give me a thumbs up if you're following me so far right down here to these two fractions. 4 over 36, 15 over 36. Give me a thumbs sideways if you're a little bit lost right now on how we got to these two fractions. Okay. It'll make more sense, I think, once we see another example. That's good. I mean... Like I said, this is a little bit of Math 7 review, so hopefully it's starting to come back to us as we're talking about it. But if not, that's all right. We'll take our time. Now, take a look here. Now we're adding these fractions. Like we mentioned in the warm-up, when we're adding fractions, do we change the denominator at all? No. No. We just add the numerators across. So what's our new numerator here? 19. And our denominator stays the same. It's going to be... 36. That right there is our answer. 19 over 36. Uh, let's take a look at another example real quick. Let's do, um, we'll go 1 over 4 plus um, 3 over 16. So some of you might be able to tell right away from something like this what our LCD is, right? Can anyone just decipher what our LCD is going to be just by looking at this? 16, right? But let's do our multiples table and see what happens. If we've got 4 here and we've got 16, 
times 1, times 2, times 3, and times 4. That should be enough. So multiplying by 1, we get 4. Multiplying by 2, we get 8. 3 is 12. 4 is 16. Then we do 16. 16 times 1. Oh, there we go. There's our matching pair right there of 16s. So if you know your multiplication facts, you should be able to get our LCD here using this table. Once you see that same number for the very first time, you're going to stop, and that's going to be your LCD right there. Go ahead. So our LCD here is going to be 16. What are we going to have to multiply this first fraction by? 1 over 4. No, what do we have to multiply this fraction by? 4 over 4. Why do you say that? What's that going to give us on the bottom? 16, right? So Noah just multiplied 1 over 4 by whatever multiplier gave us 16. That's the LCD we want. We see that we got 16 by multiplying by 4. So we can multiply this by the fraction 4 over 4. What are we going to multiply 3 over 16 by? 1 over 1. Great job. Which basically means we're doing nothing to it, so we don't have to. And then we get 4 over 16 plus 3 over 16. We add those together, and what do we get? 7 over 16. That's what we get for that one. So you don't have to write that example down. That was just kind of talking through finding the LCD. Questions on that so far? Okay. Seems like, based on your guys' participation, it seems like we're pretty much remembering how to find the LCD, right? Show thumbs real quick. Finding LCD, thumbs up if you remember. Feeling confident, thumbs sideways if you maybe have a couple questions. Okay, good. All I see is thumbs up, maybe a little bit thumbs sideways. Remember, today's Monday. I'll have tutoring after school from 3.15 to 4.15 today. Usually it's from 3 to 4, uh, but I have supervision this week, so I have to stand out by the bike rack after school. So it'll start at 3.15. You'll see the time is different up on the board. Um, if you need more help.